Hi, welcome to another Real Time Faith lesson discussion for early teens class. It's a blessing and an honor to have you with me as we study together and learn from God's Word. Now this week's lesson, the topic is Standing for Religious Liberty. Standing for Religious Liberty. Now America is a nation that was born out from the search and the need for religious liberty. People who were persecuted in Europe by the early church came to America seeking religious freedom. And this freedom they held on to and they put into their constitution. And this great nation was born out of this need and this search for religious freedom, religious liberty. But we see in the book of Revelation, if you understand it correctly, that America will arise as a beast out of the land that will seem to look like a lamb, innocent, but will speak like a dragon. Yes, there will come a time that the nation, the great nation of America, will look like innocent like a lamb, but will speak like a dragon. It will remove the very freedoms for which it was founded. And we will see that as, as this world comes to a close. My brothers and sisters, why is religious freedom important? Why is religious liberty important? Why should we stand for it? Where does freedom truly come from? How do we get freedom? And how can we show this or exercise this religious freedom? How can we allow others to exercise the religious freedom? Should Christianity force others to follow their faith? Should Christians force people of the Hindu faith to, to follow Christianity? Should they force Muslims to follow Christianity? Should we force people who are atheists, agnostics, to come and follow Christianity? People who don't believe in God or believe that there is not enough evidence to prove that God exists. Should we force them to follow Christianity? And should we also force people to accept one day of worship or to keep one day for worship, either Saturday or Sunday? Should we do that? What is true religious freedom? Now, before we go into this lesson any further, please close your eyes, bow your heads, and we'll pray together. Our gracious Father, our eternal God and King, Father, we thank you and praise you for all that you do. And Father, we pray that you may help us as we study your word. Please open our hearts and minds. Father, we thank you and praise you for everything. We ask you, Lord, this prayer in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen. Now, as I said, our topic is standing for religious liberty. Standing for religious liberty. Now, how do we get liberty? or How do we get this freedom? Where does freedom truly come from? Does freedom mean that we are free from all sets of laws, all regulations and rules? What is true freedom? Does freedom mean that we can do whatever we want? Now, in order to understand freedom and where freedom comes from, I'll ask you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 15 and we'll read from verses 1 to 9. Matthew chapter 15 and we'll be reading from verses 1 to 9. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift. Or in another passage, It is Corban. It is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoureth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
but in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Here Jesus came with his disciples, and his disciples did not wash their hands before they ate. And so the scribes and Pharisees, thinking that sin came from the outside, made this statement and said, Why do your disciples, why don't they wash their hands before they eat? Why are they eating with unwashed hands? They will put the uncleanness into themselves. And so Jesus answered and told them, And why do you, for the sake of keeping your tradition, go against the commandments of God? If God has said, Honor your father and mother, then why, when your father and mother need help, you say that your money is restricted for other things and you don't need or you don't intend to help your father and mother. You don't care about helping them. You say that your money is for religious purposes and you don't help them. You go against the commandments of God to keep your tradition. That is wrong. And sin comes from the inside, from the, from the heart, not from the outside. It doesn't come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. Jesus was trying to help them understand that because of their traditions, they were forsaking the commandments of God. Because of their traditions, they were making the commandments of God of no effect. You see, my brothers and sisters, true freedom comes from keeping the commandments of God. And here we see from this, this passage that the Pharisees tried to impose some sort of restriction upon the disciples, that they needed to wash their hands before they ate. And there were also other restrictions that they placed. Once you're a scribe or a Pharisee, your money, your money belongs to the, to the religious purposes. You should only spend it for religious purposes. If your parents need help, don't spend it on them. Tell them that you have given it as a gift to the work of the Lord. You see, my brothers and sisters, the very same God who gave us life, who gave us everything in this world, has told us, has commanded us to honor our father and mother, to take care of them when they are in need. But for our own traditions, for the things we come up with out of our hearts and minds, we have decided to forsake the commandments of God. By our traditions, we make of no effect the commandments of God. And here is where true freedom is found, in the commandments of God. Keeping the commandments of God gives us true freedom. When we keep the commandments of God, we learn to love our brothers and sisters around us. When we keep the commandments of God, we learn to love our God. We learn to be respectful to other people. We learn to keep their dignity. We learn to honor them. We learn to take care of their needs. Without the commandments of God, our society deteriorates. Without the commandments of God, we become restrictive. Without the commandments of God, we hurt others. You know, when you go on the road, you travel, you see signs that tell you to give way at the crossing. Now imagine if we remove that sign many people will start to die at the crossings. If we remove the law that you shouldn't slow down at crossings and stop and give way, then people will die. People will risk their lives crossing the road. If we remove the signs that says, don't go beyond 60 on this road, 60 kilometers an hour on this road, then we are now living according to our own standard. We drive according to our own standards. If we want to speed, we speed. And then we cause more accidents. We see that speed kills. And this is why the law exists to be a blessing to everyone. It doesn't restrict. The law of God gives freedom. And the only person who has convinced us or tried to convince us that the law does not give freedom is the devil himself. When he rebelled in heaven, he made an argument against God that the law was restricting the angels from realizing their full potential. And he wanted to be their liberator, to free them from the control of God and Christ, to free them from the control of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. 
But when they pointed to the law and that he needed to keep the law as every creature should, as everyone who has been created by the hand of God should, he made an argument that the law was restrictive. The law was out of date, out of style. Like many young people say today about the, their parents' rules. The, the, the rules are out of date, out of style. They're restrictive. They don't allow me to realize my full potential, to enjoy my life to the fullest. This, these are the words of the devil himself. In Psalm chapter 2, if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me and see what it says in Psalm chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. It says here, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Here David is giving an insight into the rebellion in heaven. The devil and his angels rebelled against Christ and God and against the law of God. And they said, let us break away from them. Let us cast their cords asunder. The rule they have over us, let us throw it away. And we see in Jude chapter uh, Jude 1 or Jude um, verses 5 to 7, we see this same thing explained here, what the devil and his angels did in heaven. If you can turn with me to Jude, and we'll read from verses 5 to 7. Here it says, I will therefore put in remembrance, put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. So here the Lord brings the people out of Egypt, the people of Israel, but destroyed them because they believed not. And look at verse 6, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, unto judgment of the great day. The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation in heaven, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So here Jude is describing why God will visit judgment upon us. He says the people who came out of Egypt, the children of Israel who came out of Egypt, they were judged because they believed not. And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were judged because they kept not the commandments of God. They went after strange flesh. They fornicated. They did all manner of evil against the Lord. They broke the commandments of the Lord and they were judged with eternal fire. And what about the angels in heaven? What was their crime? And they were cast down that they did not keep their first habitation. The simple reason is the same as for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the same for the children of Israel who came out of Egypt. They kept not the commandments of God. The angels did not keep their first estate in heaven, the devil and his angels, because they kept not the commandments of God. The commandments of God help us to be truly free. But the angels in heaven rebelled against the commandments of God, the law of God. Not only did they rebel against God, but they also went against His law, which sets us free. They went against His law. And we see that the devil makes those arguments when he speaks to God about Job. Does anyone worship you because they love you? Does anyone worship you because they truly care about you? People only worship you because you bless them and you give them things and you put a hedge around them. People only worship you and love you because you give them good health. But when you take these things away, people do not love you. People do not keep your law out of love. But there Job showed the devil and his angels that there are people who hate evil and love the Lord. There are people who keep the commandments of God out of love. 
You see, my brothers and sisters, either we can accept the lie of the devil, either we can accept that the laws of God are restrictive, either we can accept that the laws of God stop us from reaching our maximum, the best, the pinnacle, that we can live without it, or we can choose to follow God and be liberated by His law. My brothers and sisters, religious liberty can only be granted to everyone if we truly keep the commandments of God. And if we truly have religious liberty, then we should allow others to worship whenever they want, to worship whoever they want. We shouldn't force people who are Muslims or Hindus to become Christians. And as Christians, we shouldn't force people to worship on one particular day. Neither should we force people to give tithes and offerings. Everything should be done out of, the, out of how they feel in their hearts, how God has impressed them, what they believe is the truth. We should never force people to do against what they believe, to go against what they believe. My brothers and sisters, true religious freedom comes from having a relationship with Jesus Christ keeping His laws and commandments out of love. It is only by doing so that we can, we can show God's love to everyone else, that we can live, with, live in peace with every man, woman and child. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Himself said when He came to this earth, that I have not come to do away with the law, but I have come to fulfill the law. I have not come to do away with the prophets who preached the law, but I have come to fulfill it. I have come to fulfill the law. My brothers and sisters, the only thing that gives us true religious freedom is the law of God. Are you keeping the law of God in its fullness? Or have you disregarded one or two commandments? Are you keeping the law in its fullness? Or are you keeping the traditions of man? Jesus has clearly warned us that if we start to put the laws of man in place, the traditions of man in place, what we think is best, that contradicts the law of God, that does not amplify it, then we will only lead to persecution and trial and troubles. My brothers and sisters, do you want to do that? Do you want to be someone who takes away the religious liberty of someone else? We should stand for religious liberty. And the only way we can stand for religious liberty is if we keep the commandments ourselves. I thank you for joining me in this lesson and I pray that God may bless you and be with you and that He may enlarge your hearts and minds as you continue to study His Word. Please bow your heads, close your eyes and we'll pray together. Our gracious Father, our loving God and King, we thank you for your Word. Father, we pray that you may help us to keep your commandments because truly keeping your commandments helps us to be truly free, not to be restricted, not to be kept from becoming our best. We can only be our best through keeping your commandments. Father, please help us to love you and honor you and please help us to love and honor those beside us, our fathers, our mothers, Lord, our friends who may be of another faith who may choose to worship on another day. Help us to love and honor you. Help us to love and honor those around us. We thank you, Father, for all that you do. And we ask for your forgiveness. We ask you, Father, this prayer in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen.